Thank you for purchasing a genuine Norisil pressure controller. In this video, I will talk about maintaining the Series 4900 pneumatic pressure controller. It's very important to take all necessary safety precautions. Before you disassemble or perform any type of maintenance, you need to relieve all pressure in this device. Not doing so could result in personal injury or damage to the device. It could also cause uncontrolled venting or spilling of online fluids, which could also cause loss of process control or environmental contamination or even personal injury. To replace your board on tubes, first you need to shut off the supply and control pressure inputs to the controller or transmitter. Remove the machine screw that connects the link and the bearing between the beam and the board on tube. And remove the control tubing and the two screws that hold the board on tube to the mounting base. Make sure you keep the link and bearing to use with the replacement board on tube. Next, attach the link and bearing to the replacement board on tube and reattach the board on tube to the mounting base using the two machine screws that you just removed. Now reconnect the link and bearing to the beam, making sure that the beam is parallel with the bottom of the case. Realign it if you need to and tighten the screws. If a board on tube with a different range was installed, it's also necessary to replace the pressure setting knob scale. Just remove the machine screw and install the new scale. Check all tubing fittings and the board on tube machine screws for leaks. If you need to, tighten them. We recommend that you calibrate the controller. We have a video that highlights how to calibrate the Series 4900 pneumatic controller, which you can view at www.norisseal.com. You can change the action of your controller from direct to reverse, or vice versa, by changing the position of the reversing block and bellows tubing. First, make sure the pressure is relieved from the controller. Disconnect it from the process, control and supply pressure, and vent any trap pressure. If you have a proportional only controller with a manual set point or transmitter, disconnect the end of the proportional tubing connected to the mounting base and reconnect it to the opposite side. If you have a proportional plus reset controller, disconnect the ends of the proportional and reset tubing that connect to the mounting base and reconnect them to the opposite sides. If you have a proportional only controller with a remote set point, disconnect the proportional and remote set point tubing from the mounting base and reconnect them to the opposite sides. Now you'll change the reversing block assembly. Remove the sealing screw and inspect the O-ring located in the recessed area under its head. If you need to, replace the O-ring. Now remove the reversing block screw in the reversing block assembly. Take a look at the O-ring located in the recessed area under the screw head and between the reversing block assembly and the calibration adjuster. Replace these O-rings if you need to. Next, place the reversing block assembly along with the O-ring on the calibration adjuster so the nozzle is on the opposite side of the beam from where it was. Make sure the reversing block is positioned so that the alignment pin engages the hole in the calibration adjuster and replace the reversing block screw. Install the sealing screw with the O-ring in the hole that was previously covered by the reversing block assembly. Make sure you check all connections for leaks with a soapy water solution. Once you've done that, you should calibrate the controller. A video that highlights how to calibrate the controller is available at www.norisseal.com. Changing a proportional only controller into a differential gap controller, or vice versa, is as easy as changing the position of the proportional tubing. First, you disconnect the controller from the process, control, and supply, and vent any trap pressures. Then, remove the end of the proportional tubing connected to the mounting base and install it into the other connection. Don't change the position of the reversing block unless the action of the controller is also being changed. Finally, check the tubing fittings at both ends for leaks with a soapy water solution. To replace the relay, first you need to disconnect the supply and control pressure lines to the controller or transmitter, and then disconnect the tubing from the relay. Unscrew the two countersunk head screws located behind the relay on the exterior of the case and remove the relay assembly and gasket. Replace the relay assembly and gasket with the machine screws through the back of the case. Reconnect the relay tubing and check all connections for leaks with a soapy water solution. Perform the appropriate bench calibration procedure. You can check out the calibration video or download the new Series 4900 Operations Maintenance Manual at www.norisseal.com.